Developing good kite skills is up to you. Using the B2 with our learning system will teach you everything you need to know before you take your first lesson. The B2 kite has just the right amount of power to give new kiters the feel of a traction kite without ever feeling unsafe. When choosing a spot to fly the B2, choose a location with smooth, steady wind that's free of obstacles, including fences, cars, light poles, and electrical lines. Once you have found an ideal location, go ahead and remove the B2 from its bag. Unroll the B2 with the trailing edge of the kite facing into the wind. Go ahead and secure the kite by placing a few small objects on the trailing edge. Depending on how strong the wind is will determine how heavy your object needs to be. The thin black lines attached to your B2 are called bridle lines. There is a left bridle set and a right bridle set. Carefully inspect the lines and make sure there are no tangles or damaged lines. Your B2 control bar comes pre-installed to the B2 kite. With the bar in one hand, walk slowly into the wind while simultaneously removing the lines from the line winders on the ends of your control bar. Once you have unwound all of the lines from the bar, go ahead and pick up the bar and check for any twists in the lines. If there are any twists, spin the bar until it appears that the lines are free from one another. Also make a visual check that the slingshot logo on the bar is facing upwards and facing towards you. The bar should always be in this position when flying the B2. Now that you are all set up and ready to fly the B2, identify the wind direction so that you can better understand the wind window. This is the zone that your kite will fly in. Think of the wind window as a clock. Between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock is the power zone where the kite will fly the fastest, and 12 o'clock is a spot where you will launch the B2 directly downwind. Before launching your kite, be sure there are no twists in your lines and that your arms are shoulder lengths apart. Then give your partner the signal to launch your kite. Your arms should be extended with your arms slightly bent at the elbow. Bring your kite straight up to the top of the wind window, otherwise known as 12 o'clock or neutral. Once you can safely fly the kite and keep it in the neutral position, start making some figure eights. To steer, simply pull the side of the bar that you want the kite to turn. As you pull, wait for the kite to make its move and then pull with an equal force on the opposite side of the bar to steer it back the direction from which it came. In stronger winds, the force required to turn the kite will become smaller and smaller, as will the time required for the kite to respond to your bar input. In lighter wind, the force required to steer the kite will become greater, as will the kite's response time. Once you have your small figure eights dialed, you can go ahead and make larger diameter ones by steering the kite from one edge of the power zone to the other. Try to steer the kite at a consistent speed to deliver a constant feel of power to your bar. Keep in mind that the faster and harder you steer your kite, the more and more power that it will generate. See how the kite responds in different areas of the wind window. Fly the kite to the edge of the window to simulate launching and landing of your kite, and notice how the kite responds slower than when it is in the middle of the power zone. Then practice landing your kite to your partner on the edge of the window as well as relaunching it from the same position to better prepare yourself for your larger traction kites. Another skill that will help you in the long run is to run with your B2. This will build a parent wind for when there's a lull in the wind or the wind is just super light. It also shows you the flying characteristics of a traction kite while you are in motion. To simulate your water start or getting up on a kite board by sitting down and using the kite's power to pull you up from a seated position into a standing position. To achieve this, steer the kite from one side of the power zone to the other, generating the lift you need to pull yourself up off the ground. To better prepare yourself for your first lesson, try steering the kite from left to right and standing up, and then vice versa. There could be a situation where your lines are crossed, and that's okay, your kite will still fly. To untwist your lines, park the kite in neutral and spin your whole body in the opposite direction of the twist, while making sure to keep your arms at an even length to prevent unwanted steering or crashing of the kite. Another option is looping your kite until your lines are straight. To do this, pull hard on one side of the bar until the kite has made a full loop and then reset both of your hands to the arm's length location. To self-launch your kite, put some weight on the trailing edge of the B2 with the leading edge of the kite facing with the wind. Return to the bar and slowly back up until the kite looks ready to launch. Then pull hard with both hands evenly popping the kite off the ground and into the sky. To land the kite, fly the kite low on one side of the edge of the wind window. Once the kite slowly sets down to the ground on that side, 
pull on one side of the bar or line on the same side of the bar to fully depower the kite. Once you have either self-landed your kite or landed it to your partner, begin winding the lines by grabbing both the lines in one hand and weaving them in a figure eight motion through the line winders on the end of the bar. Once you are a couple feet from the kite bridle, go ahead and roll the lines around the end of the bar and place the bar on the inside of the kite's canopy. Then roll the kite and the bar from one end to the other and place the kite into its bag so that it is ready to fly for your next session.